just uh, if Miranda could tell me, is Rick Hot Huxted on the line tonight? He did pose one question, and I might tackle Rick's question straight off. So uh, Rick is online, is he? Okay. Well, good, Rick. Good to have you online, and thank you for the uh, the one and only question that we got that I can see so far. The question. Where he says, look, Australian businesses seem to be slow in responding today to change. Uh, and he names a number of Australian companies, and uh, we have people internationally this evening, so you won't recognise some of the names, but Nick Smith Electronics, uh, Roger David, and quite a few companies that have failed in recent years. And we're very, very successful company for a very, very long time, and it poses the question, why is that happening? Um, he seems to suggest that it's a lack of uh, adjusting to uh, what the market is demanding today. And the market is demanding uh, different ways of communicating. I guess I'm stating the obvious here, and it's a really good question. So Rick says, uh, what's the, uh, the future of selling uh, as you see it? And uh, he gives some suggestions as to how he is handling the, the sales situation. And um, I, and I would totally agree with you. I truly believe that today, because um, we are so, oriented around uh, social media, electronic communication like we're doing here now on video conferencing, that it's actually the human element that makes the big difference. Years ago, it was sort of predicted, well, you know, salespeople won't be needed so much in future. People will just be ordering online. And for certain products and services, I'd agree that would be absolutely the truth. But the major difference is that we have the ability to influence people largely today and the advantage largely today if we can have that human element of communication and set us apart from others who take a, a more easy way of doing it. And has selling changed and have the strategies around selling changed? And the answer is absolutely yes, in that we do need to uh, sell in different ways today than what we ever did in days gone by. Now, a lot of salespeople who've been in sales for a long time are simply not making that adjustment. And here's the fact, the skills have changed, the strategies have changed, most salespeople have not, which means they're being left behind and their customers' expectations are not being met. And a lot of salespeople will tell you it's highly, highly competitive in the marketplace, that people are only buying on price. Well, they will. They will buy on price if there's no other differentiating factor. The major factor that we all have the ability to control is the human factor, the human element. The ability to build relationships, the ability to build rapport quickly, the ability to build trust quickly. And the fact is we go about that today in an entirely different way than we did 10 years ago, even five years ago. And so I guess my advice straight off here, um, and we have a range of experience I know with people on the line here tonight, but if you have not done any skill development training in developing your selling skills, your negotiating skills, your communication skills, then I'm sorry, you're going to be left behind and you're going to be selling only on price. Now, how can I assert that so definitively? It's because we get to work with salespeople all the time and business people and sales managers who have made a decision to upgrade their skills and it makes the world of difference. And you may even care to have a look at our website under the uh, head, headline of uh, success stories, for example, and you'll see remarkable transformations when we upgrade skills. The other good thing about skills is all skills can be learned. Excuse me, stating the obvious here. But um, we can develop new skills. We can upgrade our skills. Well, you know, the average salesperson says, oh, hey, what, do some training? I mean, I've been selling for 10 years, but gee, life's tough out there right now. Well, yes, it is because things have changed. So it's a question of, do you upgrade your skills? Well, some salespeople say the company should train me. You know, if they want me to be more skilled, they should train me. Question, what if they don't? I mean, would you really uh, leave the responsibility for your future success to your company? Now, believe me, I, I believe companies should have responsibility to provide the right sort of training for their salespeople, but many companies don't. Uh, it is an investment to make, and good training provides an extremely good return on investment. But sadly, there's a lot of really bad training out there right now, really bad sales training that's being offered in the marketplace by people who are still dishing up the same old things that uh, were dished up 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 
And as I mentioned there before, uh, Top Down Business Academy, we've been training sales and business people now for 43 years, and it's changed. Uh, we re-recorded all of our online videos two years ago to update them, uh, and we continually uh, record and update all of our material all of the time because everything's changing. So look, I hope that addresses it. I believe what you've said there in terms of the steps that you're talking about, about um, making an appointment to see people face to face, yes. Uh, having a discovery session where you sit quietly, you ask questions, you listen, you build rapport, you build trust, you ask intelligent questions, you show that you genuinely care. And those things that I've just mentioned there are not done by the average salesperson. Average salesperson goes along and plays what I call show and tell. They jump straight into a presentation. And often it's because the prospect has said, okay, I said 15 minutes, go. Tell me all about your company and why we should do business. And uh, you may want to make some notes of this, but the average salesperson jumps in and says, oh, okay, let me tell you all about how terrific we are, how good I am, how good our prices are, and who's in control of that situation. Obviously the prospect. The professional salesperson says something like this. In fact, if you're a top gun uh, graduate, you're on the program, you'll recognize these words. I'm not making this stuff up. This is a scripted word for word way of starting a first meeting with a customer. Mr. Prospect, I'm not gonna try and save you anything at all right now. Uh, would that be okay? Now, immediately the level of uh, trust goes up and the stress goes down. Uh, Randy Sigmund and me, are you not hearing me? Or what's the... Very noisy. Noisy background? Okay, I'm sorry. Follow me. It'll be okay. I'll talk about it. And the phone's not working. Hopefully you can hear me. So the, uh, the, the professional salesperson says, I'm not going to try to say anything at all right now. All I'd like to do is ask you a few questions, understand the situation and your needs. And once I do, is it then okay if I make a recommendation? So that should get us into comfortable conversation with our prospect, where the, uh, the client is ready to share with us what's going on. So that's the very first thing that we want to do. We want to get into comfortable conversation with the prospect. We want to show the prospect that we genuinely care about them. And the best way to do that, of course, is to ask questions, listen, and take notes. In fact, what you're going to do is you're actually going to say to the prospect, is it okay if I take some notes? I like to organize my thoughts and then I can make the, the right recommendation to you. So I'm just gonna ask you, is there any questions right now as I move that anyone would like to pose? It's just as I follow Miranda to a different location. Uh, so just open your mic if anyone would like to make a comment or Rick, we're dealing with your question. So you may care to open uh, your mic and just tell me am I on track and answering the way that you want me to answer. A lot of silence there right now. Okay. All right. So that's the very first thing to do is to uh, build that rapport, build that trust, ask the questions, and uh, really just starting to focus on the prospect rather than uh, focus on ourselves. And that's how we set ourselves apart from anyone else that we are. Uh, competing with a competitor. Because competitors will always sell on price, particularly if they're inadequately trained. But you're gonna have a major advantage if you in fact approach it in a different way. So, all right, we've found a quieter location. That's much better, should be able to hear me now. Uh, apologies for this, but flights don't always run on time, sadly. We have plenty of time, but obviously, Something went wrong. Okay, good. So, um, I hope that answers that question. Now, I might just ask, are there any other questions that anyone would like to pose before I get into the backup topic about positive attitudes and always um, being able to uh, remain positive? So, I'll just throw it open. If anyone would like to just open your microphone, you'll see down the bottom of the screen there where it says, uh, mute, if you just unmute yourself, let's, uh, let's take any other questions that might be there. Nothing? Okay. All right, group tonight. Right. So we're going to talk about this question of maintaining a positive attitude. 
And uh, we get the first coin that's been shown on the screen there for some time, and that is we can affect our attitude by how we see the world and how we focus on our attitude. And one of the best ways to do this, I've found, and I've got seven points for you. No, I think I've got ten points for you. I said I have seven, but I have uh, three more bonus ones this evening that I thought up about when I was on the, uh, the aircraft. One of the things that we can do is listen our way to success. Now, what do I mean by that? Look, we are all influenced by the things that we hear, the things that we see every day. And by this I mean the people around us and the things that we choose to listen to. And that word choose is really important. We have a choice. We can take in all of the information that comes our way or we can be very, very selective. So for example, um, as sales professionals, you know, if we are driving to an appointment, we can choose to turn on the radio, never listen to what's happening on the radio. Now I call that bubble gum for the ears, chewing gum for the ears. Uh, it's often you know, music, which is fine if that motivates you. But more often than not, it's uh, the news. And mainstream media is full of a whole lot of really negative news, a lot of which is not true. And so if we choose to take in a lot of negative um, audio by uh, free you know, radio, then we are taking in a lot of negative stuff. So many of you, I'm sure, choose to listen to audio programs. And that would be my advice. It's one of the major factors that influenced my life at a very young age when I got into sales. There were these things called cassettes. <laughs> and I chose to invest in some great cassette programs. And I would deliberately listen to them as I would travel and as I would exercise. So excuse me stating the obvious, but it is really a major factor if we take in positive ideas from audios these days. And there's so much good stuff available, but sadly there's a whole lot of really old stuff available as well. So I'll be suggesting that you turn your travel time into learning time. And if you think about the number of kilometers or miles, depending on where you are, that you are actually in your motor vehicle, if you turn all of that travel time into learning time uh, and focus on taking in positive how-to, inspirational, educational, audio, it will make a major difference because the average person will not do that, which is why they will always become and remain average. It is simple as that. Can it make such a major difference? Absolutely. And we see people who come onto our programs because our programs have an audio component as well, our downloadable MP4, MP3 programs where they're listening to the audios as well as um, doing the, the online videos. So listen your way to success would be the, the very first uh, idea that I'd share with you. Number two, take courses in your chosen field, whatever that might be. Okay, so we're talking to a group of salespeople, so if um, your chosen profession is selling, I'd be listening or, or taking courses on selling. If you're in sales management, I would be studying sales management. If you're in a leadership role, study leadership. If you're a private pilot like me, study how to fly. It keeps you alive, you know. <laughs> you, you develop those skills. And as I said before, all skills can be learned. But the average person says, well, you know, I don't have the time to do that. Well, you know, that's an attitude to have. Nor do I have the money to do that. Don't you realise courses cost money? Well, good courses provide an extremely good return on investment. So, yeah, deliberately choose to develop your skills because the fact of the matter is that you will be as good tomorrow as the skills that you develop today. So getting around the right people is um, the next one on there. Let's advance to the next one. Next one says, visualize your goals on a daily basis. So look, when things aren't going well in our life, uh, and I speak from personal experience here, by focusing on the positive deliberately, and it is a choice, I'm gonna keep saying that over and over again, it is a choice. These are all choices that we make. We can either focus on the negative or we can focus on the positive. And by visualizing your goals on a daily basis, I mean literally taking some time, call it meditation if you wish, but literally playing the slides in your mind of the outcomes that you're wanting to create in your life. The truth is our outer world will always be a direct reflection 
of our inner world. So if we are projecting onto the screens of our minds the outcomes that we wish to create in life, our mind goes into a mechanism of saying, oh, I see what you want. Huh, okay, fine. Um, and it starts to deliver these things into our life, which is why people who focus on the negative tend to create negative outcomes in their life. If they are visualising negative outcomes like conflict in their relationships, scarcity around uh, resources, scarcity around income, scarcity uh, in their life, they're going to create exactly those outcomes in their life. Um, a gentleman called Maxwell Maltz, Dr. Maxwell Maltz, Psycho-Cybernetics, discovered this many, many years ago. And uh, you may even care to Google that, have a look at the work of Dr. Maxwell Maltz and Psycho-Cybernetics. Uh, he was a plastic surgeon and he would uh, change people's physical appearance but discovered that very often people didn't see themselves as any more attractive because they were still visualising and seeing themselves as they had pre been previously. So, yeah, visualising your goals on a daily basis. Now, a really good way to do that is something that we teach called treasure mapping. Treasure mapping is where you cut out images uh, wherever you get them from. They could be photographs you've taken. They could be from magazines. They could be images from the internet, things you want to bring into your life. So, for example, you want to holiday in a tropical paradise, I'd be cutting out photographs of that tropical paradise. If you want a particular motor vehicle, if you want a particular home to live, if you want a happy family, have those images, glue them onto a, an old-fashioned sheet of paper and put them up, make copies of them and put them up where you will see these on a regular basis so your total focus is on the things that you want to bring into your life. Okay, so visualising your goals. Uh, on a daily basis, keeping these in the forefront of your mind will, in fact, attract these things into your life. This is proven. This isn't theory. Uh, this isn't a Wayne Berry thought. Uh, there's total proof that this is exactly the way our mind works. Okay, here's number five. Action will create the outcomes. So this, the slide you're seeing should say, turn your dreams into reality through actions. Look, by setting goals and doing all of this visualisation, that's terrific, it's incredibly powerful, but in the end, all successful people take massive action on a daily basis to move them towards their goals on a progressive basis. Now, if we go back to the original reason for talking about this topic, it's about how to remain positive. So, the fact is, we build our self-esteem daily through our actions. So if each day we are taking action to move us towards our goals, we start to feel that we're achieving. We start to feel good and develop our self-esteem because we know we're taking some action. Now, does that mean that our actions immediately will create the outcomes that we're wanting you know, within the next 24 to 40 hours? Of course not. That's not the way it works. But it does in the long term taking action day by day. So those of you who are on our programs, you would know that um, depending on which program you're on, we have weekly reporting. So we have you at the beginning of the program decide what it is that you want to achieve. We have you set your KPIs. So for example, in sales, how many prospecting calls you're going to do every day? How many first meetings you're going to do every day? How many sales presentations you're going to do? Well, not necessarily every day, but weekly. We, we normally set them on a weekly basis. And then, as you know, at the end of every week, you report if you're on a coaching program and we have people on coaching programs here and we have people on non-coaching programs, so uh, whatever applies to you, um, we have you reporting to our coach on a weekly basis exactly the activities that you're doing. Now, how do you feel when you take some action and you get a good result? You feel terrific. What if you know you're supposed to take action but you don't? How do you feel about yourself? Answer, not so good. In fact, we start to beat up on ourselves. We start to feel guilty. Gee, I really should have done that, but I didn't do it. And if you habitually practice not acting on what you should and what you know you should do, you, again, are going to come up with a whole lot of negative feelings. So my advice must seem obvious here. I hope that activity and actions lead to results. Does that happen immediately? No. But we immediately start to get good feelings about ourselves because we know we're taking the actions that we need in order to create the outcomes that we want. Now, I'm not just talking about sales. I'm not just talking about leadership. I'm talking about in every area of our life. So if, for example, you've got relationship issues that you want to improve, if daily you take certain actions, you will start to create better outcomes in your relationship. The 
average person, of course, uh, never deliberately decides to take action to improve their situation, which again, you've heard me say before, is why they will always be average. In fact, it gets worse than that. They won't even remain average. They'll in fact slip backwards. Now, it's interesting, if you look around you, the successful people, and it's one of the things I do suggest that we study successful people. And I don't just mean the superstars like Sir Richard Branson, in my opinion, Sir Richard Branson, Elon Musk, you know, high achievers like that. I mean, look, can you imagine uh, the actions that, and you probably know, and if you don't know, I'd suggest start studying and following Elon Musk, what he does. He's quite an incredible uh, guy with the actions that he takes every day. Um, with the challenges they were having with the new Model 3, which, by the way, I'm, again, not sure whether you know, is the number one best-selling motor vehicle in the world today. Um, he was sleeping um, on his couch in his office because he was so committed to taking action, not even going home, sleeping only a few hours a night in there. The CEO, billionaire, in the office there, leading the staff from the front and taking action every single day. Some of you would probably know they had a goal of producing 5,000 Model 3s per week. It was behind schedule. So what did he do? He took action. He uh, built a tent <laughs> um, production line outside. You know, a tent's a bit of an inadequate uh, uh, description of what it is. But he added to his production line, took massive action. And now, um, as of last week, I think they're producing, producing 6,000 uh, Model 3s per week. Uh, the industry is against them. Of course, they are. Uh, they, uh, he's the great disruptor they uh, don't want him to achieve. And I think it was just yesterday or the day before they hit 100,000 Model 3s delivered. Now, again, if you're not familiar with what's happening with Elon Musk and Tesla and the Model 3, go on the internet, research it, particularly YouTube, and I'm going to give you some YouTube channels a little later on that I think are absolutely inspirational. And he's hit the 100,000 Model 3 um, production target. By the way, um, I should declare that when Elon Musk was on stage doing the official release of the Model 3, uh, I was in uh, a bus between uh, Ho Chi Minh City and Halong Bay in Vietnam. And it wasn't easy, but I got online at the time with a SIM card we got and I put in my reservation. I was amongst the first 300,000. Did, did you know about that? 300,000 people within, I think, 48 hours reserved a Model 3. Unprecedented people ordering a vehicle that had not been in production. Uh, quite incredible story. Anyway, turn your dreams into reality through actions. And uh, interesting thing in terms of taking a long-term view, my Model 3 uh, right-hand drive will not be delivered to Australia for at least one more year, and I've been waiting since early 2016. So here's the, um, the next, the next uh, thought here. Number six, hopefully you can see that. Randall will come and tell me if she can't, but feed your mind mental pictures of coming attractions. Look, I guess I've touched on that already. It's a choice. We can feed our mind pictures of coming attractions. And part of the way we do that is what I've just spoken about, is actually running the movie in our mind. Now, we all run movies in our mind. When every situation comes up, we can choose. There's that word again, choice. We can choose to play a movie in our mind of a negative outcome, or we can choose to play a movie in our mind of a positive outcome in life. Um, some, some of you would know, and I'll just turn the camera on here now. Some of you would, you would know, and it's, uh, I share this only because it's reality, um, and I hope it's a good example. Uh, I've been battling cancer now for nine years, and so I, I guess I'm kind of um, able to speak about remaining positive in the face of adversity. And um, I first had cancer nine years ago. It went into remission. It came back two years ago with a vengeance. So I, I'm currently, I have cancer, and... Uh, I was given uh, basically four months to live in uh, the end of 2016. Uh, it's obviously 27 months later, and uh, uh, the doctors tell me that one of the major factors that I have going for me is just my in indomitable, unstoppable attitude. Uh, and, yeah, I'm getting some medical treatment, but um, it's gone way beyond that right now. So I feed my mind all of the time all of the positive outcomes that I want in my life. And one of the things that he shared with me, he said, we don't like to tell patients uh, how long they've got because they tend to work towards the achievement of their goal. He said, if you know, we tell someone they've got 12 months to live, they tend to prepare everything and ready to die within 12 months. And of course, you know, um, I'm, I'm blessed. Uh, I think 
uh, there's, there's God's plan here somewhere, but I'm doing my best as well to create what I call brightness of the future. I mean, why on earth would I order a Model 3 and be excited about taking delivery in a year's time? Obviously, I've got to live <laughs> for one more year to get that. And I'm continually putting more goals out into the future to draw me into the future. And you can do the same, and it makes a major difference to be playing the right movies of how we're going to create the, the outcomes that we want. Does that mean we're not going to have major challenges from time to time as we go through? And I certainly do. I'm, I was in hospital just three weeks ago for a week. But that's okay. And you can see I've got a lot of energy right here now. I did it three weeks ago. But again, uh, you know, I was playing the mental movies of what I want to do in the future instead of focusing on the negative, focusing on the positive. So I hope these ideas are helping you. Let's move to the next one, number seven, if I can figure out how to do that. There we go. Um, avoid negative thinking and reject negative thoughts. Might seem obvious, right? The fact of the matter is, we cannot hold a positive thought and a negative thought at the same, same time. It's a choice. I developed years ago the ability to literally use these words, no, stop, out. Simple, no, stop, out. And I would replace a negative thought with a positive thought. So if I found that I was having uh, a negative thought coming into my mind, I would say, no, stop, out. And I replace it with the opposite thought. So if, for example, um, it was some negative thought around um, financial challenges, uh, because uh, from time to time when I've been quite ill, I've been un unable to work. So I, instead of focusing on that negative, I would switch it to, no, this is what I'm going to create. This is what I want to do. So you replace the negative with the positive every time. You do it deliberately because uh, we do have a choice as to you know, what we hold uh, in our mind. And uh, I'll just mute you guys again. I can hear someone there in the background. So we, we have a choice. No, stop, out, replace it with a positive thought. Now, I said before I uh, come up with the next ones for you, I've got three more that I'd like to quickly share with you. But uh, I will just ask, if anyone's got any questions or comments, uh, you may want to go to the chat box and uh, just type in uh, a question or a comment, and uh, Miranda will tell me about that, and I can comment on that, and I can answer any question that you might have. So um, I'll just pause if anyone wanted to do that, and that would be good. And Wayne, uh, Tremaine here. I you. couldn't agree more with what you're saying regarding uh, mindset. Uh, I've uh, witnessed that in my life where um, the, uh, the positive intention and the, the results that I wanted to create in, in my life uh, through uh, thoughts have uh, materialized themselves in, in actual reality. Uh, and I must say, throughout different stages of my life, this has worked both ways, uh, on the positive side and, and negative side. I, I wish I could, uh, I could say the same thing as you in regards to the no stop out, and I, uh, it could work that, that easily. Uh, Sometimes it, it's probably uh, a bit harder than that, but yeah, you just need to strive and yeah, you get there. Thanks, Jermaine. Look, it is a matter of discipline. And I've had quite a few years' experience doing it. And to some people, this is like a new idea. And uh, we often uh, think, oh, gee, you know, uh, it's so hard. I can't do that. Can I suggest if you ever find yourself saying, I can't do that, put another word on the end, yet. That little three-letter word, yet. I can't do that, yet. If you find yourself saying, I don't know how to do that, yet. Just add, yet. And it opens you up to the, the possibility of, of an entirely different way of, of thinking and acting. Um, but we do have a choice as to how quickly we adopt these strategies. And these strategies absolutely work. They are, they are life-saving. Um, they are life-changing. And after this evening, uh, you've got a choice. You can either uh, continue with your current strategies uh, which if those of you know something about neuro-linguistic programming, neuro the brain, linguistic language programming, we all run neuro-linguistic programs in our brain which are habitual uh, patterns of behaviour and thinking. But we have a choice. We can change them. And we make the small changes first and we gradually change. Uh, I must admit, I drive people crazy with my positive attitude because they just cannot um, get their head around it. They, you can't be positive like that all the time. Yeah, I can. 
uh, pretty much all of the time these days because I've developed the skills. And I'm not, I'm not special. I'm not highly intelligent or anything. It's just something I decided to do. And we now have so many graduates uh, who have been doing our programs year after year after year that uh, are great um, a demonstration of that as well, including Jermaine, who's been on our programs now for about two years, I think. So it's fairly early days for Jermaine, but they're doing very well. But let's move me on to the uh, number eight. I'm just looking at time. I want to see if I can keep it within the hour tonight. Um, number eight, stop watching and listening to BS MSN. Anyone care to suggest what that might mean? BS MSN? No, in that case, I'll tell you. It's called Bullshit Mainstream Media. Um, if you are watching television and you're listening to radio, commercial radio, can I suggest, think about where that stuff's coming from, guys. Mainstream media is owned by a handful of companies in the world. They have their own agenda. Um, they put a lot of negative stuff out there and you can choose to take it in or not. I choose not. I don't watch mainstream television. I don't watch or listen to mainstream radio. The people behind those microphones, the people in front of the cameras reading from teleprompters are paid to read that stuff. Um, why do they do it? They need the money. <laughs> they do it. That's what they do. So all of the negative news that you're hearing in the world right now, for example, Donald Trump, all the negative stuff that he's doing, and let's not get into what your personal views are on it. I'm happy to debate it afterwards if you like. But there is an awful lot of really, really positive stuff that, for example, that gentleman is doing. Um, which never makes it into mainstream media. You never hear about it at all. All you hear is negative, negative, negative. Why? They've got vested interest to do that. So instead of watching mainstream um, television or mainstream media, and I include in that newspapers, things like that, why would you want to waste your time reading a newspaper to be told all of the negative stuff out there, most of which is not true? And I, I will debate it with you, and I can give you examples of stuff that is absolutely not true that you're hearing every single day and believing. And I've got family members that I love a great deal um, a particular, um, a couple of sons there that I talk about. And we often uh, talk about, for example, Donald Trump. And uh, um, my son says, well, you know, he's, he's such an idiot. I mean, look what he's doing. He's driving the world towards uh, world wars and uh, all this sort of stuff. So interesting, where do you get your information from? It's, oh, I see it on TV. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, there's your answer. Um, so here's what I'm saying. Selectively watch educational, inspirational YouTube. So, hey, those of you who are on our programs who are watching uh, our videos, that's great. Terrific. But, hey, broaden. Deliberately watch inspirational, educational YouTube. I take in so much information every day that is educational and in bite-sized chunks. I watch five-minute chunks on a whole variety of subjects, and that makes me very knowledgeable about these subjects. And you can become knowledgeable on subjects that you want to know about. I'm a private pilot, for example. Um, have been since my 20s. And I continually update my information on what's happening. Oh, fascinated by electric airplanes these days, you know, from the old days. Um, and there are now electric aircraft flying around. And keeping up with technology, keeping up with what's happening in the real world out there by watching YouTube. So if I have some time, I don't waste time doing uh, spinning the wheels or you know, reading the newspaper or seeing what's on TV. I just go on YouTube, have a relaxed ride. I might watch half an hour or 45 minutes of a whole lot of different subjects. I've got an account on YouTube, and of course you probably know they tend to suggest to you things that have interested you in the past, and you can uh, you know, update yourself on stuff. I've got some um, here, possibly you can see that. Uh, here are some of the ones that I really enjoy keeping up with. So if you go into YouTube and you look for the channel called Tesla Times, I'm just absolutely fascinated by what Elon Musk is doing. It's also got uh, uh, that next one down there, Now You Know, run by uh, a father and son team out of uh, um, Massachusetts in the United States. Fascinating stuff. They present it extremely well. They research it. They put out one to two videos a week. They range from 15 minutes to an hour long videos. Nicely produced. Very terrific. And they focus on sustainable energy and what's happening in the world of sustainable energy and technology. So they feed a whole lot of great information on Tesla. They feed a lot of information on SpaceX. Wow, what, what he's doing, what Elon Musk is doing with SpaceX, just amazing. Solar City, of course, is again a part of, uh, of Elon Musk. The Boring Company, you know, uh, the technology there for uh, uh, building uh, tunnels under the ground. They've already got some cities where they're going to start to do this, where your motor vehicle goes down into the tunnel, zooms along on skates, comes up at the other end. This is not future, you know, this is 
technology that's happening right now. So he created the Boring Company, great name for a company, right? Um, so another one of his companies uh, is, um, you've got the Tesla Power Walls, of course. You've got Hyperloop, which isn't one of his companies. He's op open sourced that. But just look, it's fascinating what's happening with Hyperloop. That's the high-speed transport system. Uh, that's not that far away. Um, and, you know, why have NASA have been so slow uh, when Tesla, uh, I'm sorry, um, uh, Elon Musk is talking about putting uh, people on Mars uh, very, very, you know, within the next few years, within our lifetime. Gee, I'd love to go. Um, and maybe I can, who knows. Um, another one of my favourites is uh, sailing La Vagabond. Now, this is just for me, it's not for you, but um, I am a sailor and uh, we really enjoy this. Um, we're fortunate we have a, a, a beautiful uh, blue world ocean going catamaran. In fact, we just took delivery of a new one. Again, this is brightness of the future, bringing myself in the future. Why would you, why would you buy a, a vessel like that if you're going to die? You know, it's not in my plan. Um, and God willing, you know, I'll continue to go. But look, if I can't sail when I'm not well, uh, I uh, watch the adventures of um, these guys here who are two, two Australians travelling around the world on their beautiful catamaran and a fascinating story to look at. Anyway, it's of interest to me. Next one is Gone with the Winds again, another sailing channel I like. Coal Fusion, that's a really interesting technology uh, channel. So you just Google it and you'll find Coal Fusion. It's actually an Australian young man who, who researches uh, technology and, again, I find it fascinating. So the reason I'm saying this is again it's positive stuff it's highly mo uh, highly motivating i find when people are achieving and again this is the theme of hanging around with achievers okay because if we can uh, not necessarily meet them face to face but if we can see how other people are achieving and doing things in life that is very motivational that shows us that we have the ability and the capacity to do so much more than what we're currently doing now the last one that you'll see there alex jones can I suggest <laughs> go and look up Alex Jones or Infowars, I-N-F-O-W-A-R-S dot com. Go and have a look at Infowars. You won't find Alex Jones and Infowars on YouTube anymore because he has been banned by 127 platforms. 127 platforms um, took him off their platform right about three weeks ago now. Why? because he's got millions of viewers, millions of subscribers. He's 43 years of age. He's been doing it since 22 years of age. He's alternative media, if you like. Okay, so what he's putting out there is an alternative view of what's happening in the world. And I was really skeptical when I first looked at him. He froths at the mouth a little bit at times, guys. But uh, what he says makes sense to me. You have your opinion. Have a look. I'd be really interested in even receiving emails from people that have, uh, have been watching him. And uh, um, it's funny, I hear him say things and then a few weeks later, I hear it actually through friends that do watch mainstream media that's come out that it was true. It, it, it really uh, is what happened. So he's often known as the uh, conspiracy theorist um, where he talks about, you know, his view on what happened with 9-11 and all of these things, which, by the way, uh, again, I've got my views on that. But if you really think that uh, some man in a cave in Afghanistan with a laptop and a cell phone could organise all of that and have those buildings fall directly down into their footprint. Um, there's some real estate I'd like to show you, but we have to go at low tide if you get the idea. Really, talk about conspiracy theory. That is the conspiracy theory, what the, what the American government put forward as to what happened. Think about it. It makes no sense. Anyway, again, I'm not talking off the top of my head. I've researched it for years. I'm fascinated by it. Why don't I be fascinated in life? I find it motivational to be fascinated and question the reality of, of what we're being told happening in the world. Anyway, it's worth looking at. Uh, and again, uh, I've introduced some of you to it already, I know, and uh, I, I'd love to have a debate and talk about some of these things. Anyway, number nine. If you don't like where you are in life, move. So if physically you don't like your space where you're living, move. If you're in a job that you don't like, move. Jim Rahm put it so nicely. He said, move, you're not a tree. For those of you who don't know Jim Rowan again, I'd suggest Google Jim Rowan. And uh, Jim Rowan was one of my early mentors. I met him when I was 27 years of age. Some of you know the history. I used to bring out the American speakers to Australia. And he was the first American speaker that I ever promoted. Um, we became friends and uh, a mentor. And he's gone to God now. But um, 
he's left a wonderful legacy of video and audio. A lot of what I recorded actually for him all those years ago. And uh, his uh, materials are now being looked after by a gentleman called Darren Hardy, uh, publisher of Success Magazine um, out of the United States. Great stuff. But Jim said, you know, if you don't like where you're at, you're not a tree, move. If you don't like your job, move. If you don't like where you're living, move. Uh, we have a choice. We can either stay stuck and complain or we can move. And a change of environment can free up the mind and just make a total difference in our perspective on life. Um, similarly, you know, I don't suggest you just throw your job in, you know, go for it. See if you can improve the situation there. But if you're in a situation where you're not appreciated by your boss, by your company, uh, or you're surrounded by poor leadership, that's not going to change. That is destroying you. It is destroying your soul. Um, why would you stay? Um, again, I don't ever suggest we throw relationships away lightly. We don't want to do that. But in the end, um, if, if you're not happy with where you're at, make a change would be my, my suggestion. Number 10, always look for the positive in every situation. So in other words, when negative things happen, because negative things do happen, they always will happen, I always ask myself the question, what am I meant to learn from this experience? Okay, cancer came into my life nine years ago. I mean, it's fairly devastating. Uh, when you're told, you know, <laughs> get your affairs in order, you're probably not gonna make it till the end of the year. But again, I, I'm philosophical about this now because I've helped a great many people who face cancer because I speak about it from the platform and I'm happy to do so. And in my little way, I think I encourage people um, to not necessarily uh, uh, accept what um, the medical profession tells us is possible in terms of curing of cancer. Same thing with mental illness. Uh, I went through a period where I... Uh, I had a, a nervous breakdown, a good old-fashioned nervous breakdown, didn't even see it coming. And by the way, high achievers tend to uh, have nervous breakdowns. Uh, low achievers tend not to because when times get tough, they stop. High achievers, we tend to keep going and we break. And that's what happened to me. And I had uh, a few years of not so good um, mental illness, which, by the way, if you don't know much about it, mental illness is actually a physical illness. The brain stops working, producing the chemicals that it should produce to get uh, you know, good positive outcomes. And uh, I, again, I look back on that and I did at the time asking myself the question, how can I put this bad experience, this negative experience to some use in my life? And for me, it's the fact that I now speak openly about it from the platform. Um, mental illness is something often people don't talk about, they're embarrassed by it. But I know that uh, in my small way, I've helped a number of people who have felt very, very uh, hopeless that there was no outcome for them. And if you can encourage people through your experiences in life and share your experiences in life, I think that's very worthwhile doing. So always look for the positive in every situation. Whenever I face adversity, I always ask, what's the lesson here for me? What can I learn through what has just happened here now? Um, we will all face adversity. We will all have learning experiences. Average person calls it making a mistake. So all mistakes are an opportunity to have a learning experience. Um, and we can learn from the experience. A lot of people don't learn from the experience. They repeat the experience over and over again. That is not a good strategy. But asking the question, what have I learned from this? What will I now do differently to avoid this situation again? So even the negative, you look for the positive and create uh, different outcomes in the future. So uh, I'll just throw it open. There are any questions that anyone would like to ask on that topic. We're coming up to the, the hour mark. We've got about four or five minutes to go, and I want to give you five action commitments I'm going to suggest as we wrap up the topic. But let's throw it open for uh, discussion. If anyone's got any particular questions, happy to uh, have a chat about it. And of course, we repeat these uh, every two weeks, and uh, uh, I'll come on in two weeks' time, and uh, we'll debate and talk about it again. And if you'd like to invite uh, guests to attend in two weeks' time, please feel free to pass the link along and do that. And uh, we, uh, we don't have so many people online tonight, but uh, part of the reason is that I do record this and I do put it up and it's viewed by many, 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 many more people and actually are able to come on live at the time. So any, any questions anyone would like to pose, just open your mic and uh, we'll have a, have a chat. Uh, Wayne, there is one question from Olives uh, about uh, when selling, how do you handle negative bias? Okay. So um, the question is how to handle negative bias. Now, it depends what we define as a negative buyer. If you're talking about a, a buyer who has an objection 
and um, they're bringing up a negative about our product. Again, it's how we handle objections. So there are strategies to getting to the real objection. More sales are lost by salespeople who fail to get to the real objection than for any other reason. By that I mean, the prospect says, well, look, thank you very much. Leave it with me. I'll think it over and I'll get back to you. Then they will not return your phone call. You've had those, right? <laughs> they don't return your phone call. It's over. You see, that is not the truth. They, uh, in fact, have an objection. They simply haven't voiced it. Why? It's far more polite not to offend the salesperson and actually tell you the truth. So how do you get to the real objection? Because you can only handle the real objection if you can, in fact, get to it. So pull these hidden objections. And uh, I just hear an echo, so just excuse me. Just uh, excuse me, why? Can yeah. I clarify the questions? Please do. Yeah. Uh, Alex, would you please repeat your questions by unmuting your mic? Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, we have been chatting. Hello. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. 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 Alex, is it? yeah, no, it was more, yeah, in terms of um, negative buyers. I think there was just some, um, I needed to clar clarify on that. Um, it's more that, obviously, most of this session is about being positive and in, obviously not letting others stop you from maintaining positive and doing positive things. Yeah. Um, when you're when you're faced with a buyer that obviously isn't in that space, I think actually one of the um, other people in the group has sort of alluded to a sort of where I would go with this one, um, which is a kind of yes, don't veer them off, but yeah. they just tend to clash very, very not. Well, I've, I tend to find people buy from people like them, yeah. um, and they just tend to clash with a highly positive person if they're a highly negative person. Yeah. I just wanted your thoughts on how you would, yeah, okay, what were you what, in those what, situations? Thank you. Uh, you're in the United Kingdom, mate. Yes, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thanks for, uh, it's morning there, so it's uh, evening here. Um, I've got one, one word answer for you, and it goes like this. Next. Seriously, uh, we are going to encounter negative people that we cannot change their minds, we cannot influence them. They, they have a mindset about how they do business. They have the mindset about how the world looks to them. They have a mindset about they only buy on price. Um, the best way is to simply have more prospects in your pipeline. Excuse me if that sounds like an oversimplification, but um, highly active salespeople have lots and lots of prospects and they tend to cultivate the right prospects. And yes, your company may say you need to call on certain clients. Yes, by all means, do the job there. But some people will never change their mind. Some people are locked into relationships with existing suppliers. I, I think I know what your company does. You're involved in the higher business, aren't you? Yes, sorry, I've muted my mic there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I understand that, yeah. Um, so, uh, look, do your job as per what the company is saying. But uh, The truth is a lot of salespeople live in scarcity in that they limit themselves to the people that they're talking to. And the answer is simply to be more active with that prospect and speak to find, find better prospects, you know, find better relationships, uh, rather than dwell on the negative because we can't change people. Um, all we, all we yep. can have control over is ourselves and there are certain people that are always going to be negative. So uh, I hope that kind of addresses it. It's through greater activity, finding relationships where people are more uh, aligned with your way of positive thinking and open and some people aren't. For example, uh, one, of, one of our, um, one of, a company, a, a large association we're talking to that have got uh, about 20,000 uh, members that uh, we would, we know we can provide tremendous value to their their members uh, through our online programs. Uh, the gentleman, the, the CEO of that organisation, is just totally negative about that. He just doesn't think that uh, they would be interested, and uh, he doesn't think they would use the technology. So uh, I've gone to their competitor, and I'm seeing their competitor over the next couple of days. They have a membership of thirteen thousand. Um, it's like you know, if that that person isn't interested, I go find somebody else. Uh, don't beat my head against the brick wall trying to change people's thinking. We just find a better prospect. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah no when to no when to move on, basically. Yeah. 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 That was fine. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Was it Miranda, you have a question? Why you have to mute yourself when I talk, otherwise the I, I can hear the, the
the song that comes back. Can you mute your mic, please? Just for a moment. Can you mute your mic for a moment, please? I've had to unmute to tell you I have muted it. Yes, so go ahead. All right, so um, uh, it, it, it's a, a complicated question. Um, in we call I just get a finish one of the program called transformation. It's a transformation is about uh, your belief system. If your belief system is wrong, and then they will show up through your attitude, both personal level and business level, and your attitude will reflected by your behavior. And your behavior will impact the results. So when we're dealing with negative people in the sales situation, we can't change what the people believe. However, the strategy, if they are really big customer, um, they are really big customer is a strategy we can develop. Uh, that's called you know skill training. Uh, Jermaine just mentioned you need to build a rapport. If people are negative, it's fine. The reflection is if they value the relationship with you. If they value your relationship, most likely you can take the sales process further. If they if you, you don't have the rapport with them, which means the work we need to do is a trust, build a trust. Is a trust, if no trust, you can't sell. Uh, it's give you a little bit of clue about the strategy. It's a trust building system. Yeah. If you want to get a solution. Look, it absolutely is. Let me comment on that. And the ability to build trust is a strategy and it's a learnable strategy. Again, most salespeople don't understand how to do that. There's, there's so many different ways to build that trust. But again, most salespeople are working with inadequate strategies to do that. You know, all of you would know people, and perhaps you're one of them, who can build trust extremely quickly. And possibly you're doing it unconsciously and that you, it works for you, you don't quite know what it is that you're doing, but um, through neuro-linguistic programming, we've mapped it, we know exactly how it is that uh, people develop uh, trust quickly and rapport quickly. Uh, and it's a strategy, and as I say, all strategies can be developed, and, and that's what we help sales people do, and they've been doing that for a very long time. Um, by the way, uh, let me just make a comment here now. Some of you would already know, you're already on our programs, but... Um, Miranda uh, or, or myself at the end here will put a link here for you that you can go to click on if you like and it will lead you to a link where there's a 58-minute uh, um, pre-recorded webinar that I did some time ago called how to increase your sales by 30% or more in 90 days or less and you'll see an offer there and some of you I know started this way with us uh, for one dollar 14 days of online sales training so you can actually jump in for one dollar, do 14 days with us. During that 14 days, you have the opportunity, by the way, to do a one-on-one -on -one with a coach for an hour as you debrief with them uh, an online selling skills assessment. So that's what we always offer straight up. You fill out an online questionnaire and then you sit with a coach who goes through, gives you some practical ideas you can use immediately. Uh, you then gain some clarity around what your strengths are in terms of the skills that you have and the skills that we suggest that you develop. And uh, you, you can log on, you can look at videos, you can do the program, a very valuable program for 14 days. After the 14 days, if you say, well, this is really good, I like that, you can just simply continue. The, the dollars involved is $197, <coughs> sorry, $197 Australian per month for the sales program, or $397 a month for the, uh, the sales management leadership program. There's no contracts, opt out at any time. Uh, I should point out to you though, 90% of the people who actually uh, log on and do that uh, for 14 days love it so much they continue. Um, so, you know, it is a part of, that, part of our marketing. Um, you, you'd, you'd really enjoy it. So I, I would commend that to you if you, if you choose. So um, I hope, hope that covers that area around the skill area. 
Any other questions you've got there, Miranda, that you can see? If not, I'll wrap up with uh, five action uh, steps. No, no more questions. Okay. Miranda's General Manager of Top Gun and a very, very good uh, coach. She has a corporate background, IBM Texas Instruments, as well as uh, in the entrepreneurial area as well. And some of you I know on the line are being coached uh, by Miranda right now. Okay, let me move forward um, and give you uh, what I believe to be five uh, action exercises. And uh, again, you may care to make a note of these. I will put the recording up as well and uh, you'll receive a link. You can uh, have a look at the recording. And you may care to share this with friends that you care about, associates that you care about. And we invite you to come online again in two weeks' time. And possibly you would have um, been on the program for, for two weeks by then and have some feedback from people. Here's the first one. Listen to the audio programs in your car. We spoke about that before. Listen to audio programs when you're traveling, exercising, uh, at any time, even waiting for uh, appointments. If you're sitting in reception, sure, be prepared for uh, what's going on, but uh, you know, have one of these, these little earphones in your ear, listen from your smartphone, have your audios uh, there, and just don't waste any time. Deliberately feed your mind positive stuff all of the time. It's a choice. Number two, associate only with positive, optimistic people. I think we've spoken enough about that. Again, it's a choice. We don't want really to be rude to people, but uh, we can choose the company that we surround ourselves with. Number three, learn from past successes as well as past, I don't like to call them failures, but past challenges. So learn from past successes. When something has worked for you, repeat that pattern. Look at what works, you know. What is working with your prospecting? Analyze it and repeat that. Interesting thing about most people is they, they do something that works and then they stop doing it. We know this because part of what we do with coaching and training is we show people what to do and if they don't keep on track, um, they will quickly go, but we will quickly go back to our old patterns of behavior. So learn from past successes, repeat the patterns of behavior that create the great outcomes and you'll continue to get the great outcomes. Number four, model on what you want. Model on what you want. A little bit like the, the previous point I'm making there. Um, determine the model that creates the outcome that you want. So for example, selling is a process. A lot of people think it's all about having the gift of the gab. Hey, Harold, good to see you there. We'll talk later. <laughs> Harold's an old friend. In fact, Harold's a Top Gun grad, aren't you, Harold? If you just want to open your mic uh, for a second. Harold, you, you assisted on the early Top Gun programs back in the 1990s, didn't you? Well, can't hear you. You need to unmute yourself. Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Down the bottom, bottom left. If not, we'll talk later. No, not to worry. We'll, we'll come back to you later, Harold. So model, model on what you want to achieve. Analyze. See, sales is a process. A lot of people think, oh, it's a gift of the gab. You know, you either got it or you don't got it. Well, you know, that's bad English, I know. But the fact is that it is a process. And that's all we do in working with salespeople. We know what the process is that works. For example, we know what the 10 characteristics of all high, highly, uh, high, highly paid salespeople are. We know what those characteristics are. We know the pattern. We know the process. It's not magic. It's like step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. But if you go step one, step three, step seven, uh, and you leave out certain steps, you're going to get a, uh, a less than adequate outcome every time. So what we teach is um, how to take the steps one step at a time. So Figure out a model that works for you, and you can do that by uh, researching yourself where you can cut straight to the chase, work with somebody like us. We can tell you exactly the steps and save you uh, weeks, months, years of trial and error learning. You have unmuted yourself, Harold. Where, are, where in the world are you, sir? Uh, just in Altona now. Oh, that's in Victoria, Vi uh, Melbourne, Victoria, for those of you who don't know. And, uh, yeah, you, you, you came on board and did uh, the Top Gun programs back in the 1990s. I did, yep. How did you find that experience and what, what are you still using today that you learned back then? Um, I think particularly one of the key things is probably negotiation. Um, it was something that really uh, has made a difference for me. Yeah, I often say negotiating is uh, one of the most important skills to develop in life because life is a continuous negotiation. And again, see, most people don't know that. <laughs> we tend to get treated in life the way uh, or create the outcomes in life that we negotiate. Uh, and sadly, most people just sort of accept what's happening. But it is a really important skill to develop. Uh, I've written three books on negotiating. I'm passionate about it. But what I've noticed is people who understand how to negotiate well tend to get what they want more often in life 
but they do so in a way that doesn't rub other people the wrong way. You know, uh, being a good negotiator is about creating, you know, cliche, but win-win, but doing it in a way that you get what you want and people love to do business with you over and over again. It's not about clever, tricky stuff, nor is selling about clever, tricky stuff. So, yeah, good comment, Harold. I, uh, <laughs> and you are a great negotiator, Harold. I know you are. Things that uh, over the years you've asked, Wayne, can I just do this? Yeah, Harold. <laughs> yeah. So um, you're right. Negotiating skills really important. Let me finish up here for you now. Um, find a coach. So this is in two parts. Let me explain unreasonable friend and coach. Obviously, coach is pretty straightforward. It amazes me that people will pay dollars to get a sports coach and understand the value of a sports coach. But don't pay for a business coach. Don't pay for a sales coach. Why would you do that? Well, obviously, athletes work with coaches. What does a coach do? A coach helps us to stretch our comfort zone, helps us, helps us to set goals and objectives, helps us to develop the skills, and then keeps us on track. So we give permission to a coach to keep us on track. So if we are going to a gym, for example, we've accepted the fact that we have, number one, invested money to do the program, to, to, to go to the gym. So if you're investing money, you go looking for value, right? We're investing the time and we're there to stretch our comfort zone and create a physical better outcome in our life. So if we're working with a good coach, a coach will provide those um, those aspects, the training, keeping you on track, holding you accountable, that's a really important word, accountable to do what you know you should do. Now, in the early part of the conversation, I spoke about the importance of taking action and doing what we know we should do because every time we do, we feel great. Every time we don't do what we know we should do, we feel guilty. Guilty is a negative emotion, eats away at us, and a lot of people live on guilt. They know they should do things, they don't do things. They're finding coach who's going to coach you, keep you on track, and provide um, those aspects that will help you to create the outcomes you're look, looking for and help you to do that really quickly. Because if you try to do it on your own, it can take you months, years. In fact, in the end, uh, maybe you even give up because you, know, you, you keep getting off track. And we've got quite a few people here uh, who I've coached personally, like uh, Jermaine, for example, uh, who understand the importance of keeping on track. Here's the uh, other one, and Miranda's just walked in to remind me that we need to finish on time. Um, an unreasonable friend. It's something we developed in the, the 1990s, an unreasonable friend, a top down unreasonable friend. An unreasonable friend is somebody who will hold you accountable and will not let you off the hook. In other words, they will be unreasonable with you in your own best interest. So most people surround themselves with reasonable people. Reasonable people tend to accept our excuses. Oh, I got busy today. I, I couldn't do it. I ran out of time. I'm sorry. We don't run out of time. We inadequately plan how we use our time. Uh, I had to do a number of things today before getting on this flight. So I, got, I was up at 4.30 this morning. I was somewhere by 5 a.m. Um, I, I worked away at something from 5 a.m. till 9.30 when I uh, had to uh, be somewhere else. And it's, it's a matter of the discipline of doing that. So in terms of having an unreasonable friend, um, find somebody to whom you can be accountable who will keep you on track week after week. And that will save you getting off track. But it's permission-based. We have to give people, uh, an unreasonable friend, the permission to be our unreasonable friend. You cannot um, simply um, decide to be somebody else's unreasonable friend because you care about them. They have to give you permission to be in your face, to hold you accountable to do what you know you should do, and initially it's going to feel really uncomfortable. But here's my distinction around feeling uncomfortable. If you are feeling uncomfortable, it's mean you're being stretched outside your comfort zone. If you're feeling totally comfortable, it means you are living within your comfort zone. You are so discomfort is a sign of growth. Get an unreasonable friend in your life. Uh, we provide a combination with uh, our coaches. They um, become unreasonable friends who help uh, keep on track. So, um, Randra is reminding me time. Um, yeah, I, I do know this one. Thank you very much. Um, so, are there any final questions? Um, I would say let's call this officially the end. So, thank you for your commitment to yourself to be here this evening. And um, I will stay on the line as long as anyone would like to uh, throw me questions.
But uh, thank you for your commitment to take the time to do this this evening. Perhaps we'll see some of you in two weeks' time when we do this again. For those of you who are not currently on that program, uh, you may care to use the link that uh, I'll put in the, uh, uh, or Miranda will put in the chat box. Miranda, if you would be so kind as to just give that link, put it in the chat box to anyone who wants to click on it, to go and do that uh, 14 days of uh, sales training for, uh, for just $1. Um, you can get that link and go there and have a look, guys. So I'll just throw it open. If you want to open your mics uh, and just uh, we'll have a general discussion here now, uh, but this isn't sort of an official part of it. Anyone wants to stay a little longer. So any questions, any comments from anyone? If not, we'll just simply put that link there and you can take the link and uh, you can uh, have your evening where you are and those of you in the United Kingdom or wherever you happen to be that are about to start your day, I hope it's a really positive day for you and uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the line, guys. Okay, so I'll just put that link there for you. Um, it'll take a couple of minutes for me to just do that and uh, if you want to stay on the line to get that link, good. <laughs>